Chinese Civil War explained. Oh, here, armchair historian there. Let's listen to my boy Griffin. I was oh, so China much younger, man. <laughs> into a Thank you, Taldi. Despite thousands Thank you. of years of dynastic rule. And as always, we'll need to wind back the clock to really understand how this process. Throughout the 17th century and up until the 19th century, the Qing dynasty loosely reigned I know that, China yeah. as it was plagued by regionalism and I mean, corruption. Keeping that big to thing make together, matters man, worse, fuck. European merchants arrived in China en masse during the 18th century. These Westerners arriving were driven by fiscal interests, and some would later say that it was the wave of merchants who would spell China's near ruin. Meanwhile, in Japan, things were looking up after their decisive victory over the Chinese in the Sino-Japanese War. In Richard Bernstein's work, he writes this of the conflict. Japan's major goal was the possession of Korea and Manchuria, the vast landmasses just across the sea that were stepping stones towards the even larger... They recovered very quickly from the news. China. This defeat prompted cries for reform, and after a series of failed revolts, including the 1899 Boxer Rebellion, the Qing government found itself in an even more precarious position. By 1911, the government was fully overthrown in what was called the Wuchang Revolution. The leaders of this revolution selected the exiled intellectual Sun Yat-sen to be China's first president in 1912. However, their territories were limited to southern China, Meanwhile, such a large landmass man Yi remained in power in the north. He was backed by General Yuan Shikai, who had the largest army in the region and therefore pretty much called the shots. Thus, soon like Yat dynasty Sen warriors won over to his side without bloodshed by offering him the presence. Can I cut the music? What music? Is there any fucking music in the background, man? Do man. There, things didn't exactly go as planned. Yuan imposed a military dictatorship and exiled Sun Yat-sen after he formed the opposing Kuomintang, or KMT. In I always wondered what the world would look like if the Kuomintang won the Civil War, man. You would have a democratic, well, demo, democratic China nowadays. That would have been so interesting, huh? But I still think the USA would have had a Cold War against them. Because, like, oh, we are the USA, we're number one, man. It will probably be, um, I don't know. There will still be a lot of tension, I think. But there will be no Taiwan conflict. But Republic China will totally influence the region as much as they could. ...of China, pretty much missing the point of the rebellion in Thailand. <laughs> he quickly lost much of his support, and after his death, China was once again balkanized into regions under balkanized. the control of local you Imagine your region is so fucked up that there's a word about it. Chiang Kai-shek was the same thing as Mao and... He perjure many people after evacuating on Taiwan. Lords. After Yuan died, Sun Yat-sen returned to China and at the helm of the nationalist Kuomintang party was able to take power and impose yet another military government in 1921. Shortly after, in 1923, they sealed cooperation with the Communist Party of China, or CPC, in exchange for assistance in ending regionalism. The CPC had been founded in the wake of the May 4th movement, which involved a series of student protests formed in opposition to the Chinese government's ineffective response to the Treaty of Versailles, which transferred what was formerly Chinese-owned land to the Japanese. I like how the Treaty of Versailles fucked the world up so hard, man. The Treaty of Versailles is like a big, big core of a lot of issues that rose after World War One. The May Fourth Movement. Thank you, Glitterfart Man. Popularized Marxism as a radical alternative to the Kuomintang. Really, the only reason the CPC aligned itself with the KMT was so it could spread communism as it liberated each Clever. warlord state. With the, the Republic should have of should have purged them instantly, KMT. man. They should in have seen what a threat is coming. Sun Yat-sen died, leaving China in the hands of Chiang Kai-shek who, two years later, initiated what was known as the White Terror in response to a communist plot to overthrow him. This resulted in the deaths of thousands of members of the CPC. Oh, he was Persian communists. In the aftermath, communist leaders Li Li Song and Mao Zedong began waging a guerrilla war against the Kuomintang. While this was Thank happening, you, the Soviet Union, who saw the CPC as their communist allies, directed it to take a more aggressive stance against the Kuomintang. As a result, Li Li Son ordered an offensive to be carried out against the nationalists. 
It was a disaster. Who forced about the start disaster guys. and led to his replacement by a group of Chinese intellectuals called the 28 Bolsheviks. With warlords still in control of numerous regions and the two major political factions of China in all out war, the situation was looking worse than ever. Seeing the turmoil unfold, the shadow of Japan once again loomed over China. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank in you. In 1931, me. they sent roughly 45,000 men to occupy Chinese Manchuria. 45,000 to take no all that shit, to spare, man. The Kuomintang was forced to concede without resistance. Chang now understood that he needed to defeat I never knew the this shit, man. I never before cared. China was fully invaded. To this end, Chang assembled the largest Kuomintang army yet, and in 1934 encircled Mao's guerrilla forces stationed in the mountains. The climax of this episode was the Long March, which began when the CPC devised a near-suicidal plan to break through Chang's encirclement and march over 6,000 miles to regroup Jesus, in man. the north. But it worked, half huh? Of the CPC's forces were lost. He lost, man, he lost so much and he still managed to take China after lost all. When crossing the but that's what communism is, man. Every time you look at communist states like Soviet Russia, they lose millions of people. Doesn't even fucking matter, man. Shang River, a decision which the 28 Bolsheviks shouldered responsibility for. In the wake of this debacle. And it's always crazy how these little decisions in history make such a big impact. Imagine Mr. Sheikh would have... Imagine they would have been strategically a bit more intelligent there. Follow them, don't let them get out of the encirclement. More scouting, they're going north, we have to hunt them down. Mao took control of the communists. By the time the remnants of the CPC reached their northern destination, only 10% of them were still alive. Oh my Prompted god, Mao to launch and they still win the end. Recruitment effort. He lost 90% of his that forces. If the Japanese invaded, both they and the Kuomintang would be destroyed, Mao sought to form yet another united front. Shang was vehemently opposed to the offer, but his generals weren't. They took matters into their own hands, taking Shang hostage and pressuring him to accept Mao's offer. Chang Can't trust eventually your military decided man. to accept and formed what was called Mao the Second Front in 1937. When Japan did invade that year, the Kuomintang proved unable to fully repulse the invaders, something which worried the Chinese people, and Mao capitalized on this discontent to recruit even more men to his cause. Furthermore, That's why I always felt like and believed that Mao Zedong was a little bitch, man. He used the weakness. I mean, there is someone coming, Japan, trying to fucking kill you motherfuckers. Like, they did very bad things. And he uses that to backstab his, his own people, his own Chinese defenders, man. forces did not engage those of Japan very frequently. It's on the loudest, man! Make it louder on your part, you fucks, man! Fix your little audio issues, man! Allowing the ah! to there you go! You fixed it now? Onslaught. After Japan surrendered to the Allies in 1945, the Kuomintang and CPC ended the Second United Front. It only took one year for the Chinese Civil War to rage on yet again. The CPC was now armed with leftover Japanese weapons and equipment, had newfound support from the populace, and faced a foe who suffered- China lost 3.2 million? <laughs> Oi, 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 oi. Casualties against the Japanese, ah, whereas the communists well, lost fucked, approximately 440,000. Time to go to Taiwan, bro. After a highly successful guerrilla campaign, both Beijing and Nanking Damn. had fallen to the communists. With the capture of these two major cities, it would not be long before Mao was victorious. So many people dead, the man. Republic of China and even more are going to die in his, in his uh, when Kai he does that culture thing, right? The Kuomintang government went into exile in Taiwan in 1949 which to this day still has the official name of the Republic of China. Which it is. Under Mao's 30-year reign, tens of- Oh, sorry, Blizzard. I'm banned now from playing Diablo 4. Millions of people starved. Even so, it is still debated to this day whether Mao contributed to China's modernization or whether he delayed its development. Either way- How many people did these five guys kill, man? Like, I, think, I feel like no one is- Dude. The Chinese government still sees Mao as one of their founding fathers. Now back to our sponsor. Now back to our game. Thank you for the game. That's what I wanna do. I wanna I wanna switch it up a bit. I wanna learn about this stuff. And that's what we're seeing right now. I'm actually learning a lot here. Man, I can already see the YouTube comments. So you didn't know that yet? Oh, fucking YouTube clips, man. Oh my